We begin tonight talking about your health. Joining us is Dr. Zainab Maksumi, dermatologist at the University of Maryland Medical Center and assistant professor of dermatology and director of clinical services in the Department of Dermatology at the University of Maryland School of Medicine. Did I cover it? I think so. Doctor, thank Just you so about. much for being here again. Really oh, appreciate it. Thank you for having me back, Jeff. Let's start by debunking some misinformation. 30% of young people think tanning is safe as long as they don't get a sunburn. That is not true. It is absolutely not true, and it's it's sort of equal parts shocking and frustrating for us as dermatologists that it's it's the year 2024, and we find ourselves still telling people on a daily basis that there is no such thing as a safe tan. There is no quote unquote base tan that protects you from a sunburn. Every minute that you're out in the sun, every every time you step out of the door and the sun hits you, that sun causes damaging uh, mutations to your cells. And over time, over time, these mutations accrue until they get to the point where they cause skin cancer. There is no amount of, of tanning that provides an innate protection against that. So I know you like baseball and you go to a lot of uh, games of a, of a local team. When you're out there this time of year, the, the sun doesn't get any stronger than late June, early July, right? Absolutely. Well, what do you do? So I, I can tell you from very personal experience, I have two baseball obsessed six and a half year olds at home. We were just at the game on Saturday and we were covered in sunscreen and wide brim hats. You, you really do need both the sunscreen and plus the physical blocker of the hats to protect you because that sun really beats down on you from the hours of 10 to, to five o'clock. And if you're not covering up, if you get one sunburn, that doubles your risk for skin cancer regardless of age. Um, and so we really do need to take these extra measures. You know, you can live your life and have fun and go to the games, but you do need to cover up. How's the conversation with uh, these young gentlemen uh, about why they're getting slathered, uh, slathered with sunscreen? Any any pushback? Lots you, you of know, pushback. My friends don't have to bathe in, <laughs> in SPF 80 or whatever. Lots of pushback. They know that mommy is a is a um, a doctor of the skin and she takes care of of people's skin and they just accept that they have to wear rash guards, they have to wear tops at the pool, they have to wear wide brim hats, and I think that's just something that has been ingrained in them since they were infants, and so they sort of begrudgingly accept it, but it's, it definitely can be a struggle at times. Let me remind our viewers, if you have a question about dermatology in general, skin cancer and preventing that in particular, uh, no phone calls tonight. We uh, must have failed to pay the phone bill, but emails are working, so send an email to livequestions at mpt.org. Um, talk about your practice, the conditions that you treat, and and how you treat skin cancer. Yeah, so I'm a, a board certified, I'm, I'm double board certified, I'm a board certified dermatologist and I'm a board certified Mohs micrographic surgeon. So I specialize in the removal and reconstruction of skin cancers, particularly skin cancers on the face. So when you go see your dermatologist and they see a suspicious spot, they do a biopsy, should that biopsy come back to be skin cancer, um, if it's typically from the neck up, then they would send you to me as a Mohs surgeon. And what I do is I I identify the site, I take very, very thin layers, I mean millimeters at a time, and I look at it myself under the microscope. So I'm able to take that tissue from a patient's nose, for example, and take it to the lab, look at it under the microscope, and I can map exactly and see where that tumor is. And if there's a little bit of tumor at the six o'clock, the nine o'clock, I go back and I take more, and I, I repeat that process until I look under the microscope and I ensure that all the tumor has been removed. Once I do that, then I do the reconstruction. Construction. Is that an approach for, there's, there's like three different kinds of, of skin cancer. Does that approach work for all three? Great question. That approach works for non-melanoma skin cancer, so basal cell and squamous cell. The more um, aggressive skin cancer type called malignant melanoma, that's one in which we do what's called a wide local excision where we take standardized margins around that. With Mohs surgery, we're taking one, two millimeter margins. With melanoma, we give it a much wider berth. So that's what we, do, we call standard excision. But for the lion's share of skin cancers that we see, Mohs surgery is indeed appropriate. Melanoma is the one that really scares people because Melan it's more aggressive and, and people die from it. Yeah, people die from melanoma. 
people die from melanoma every day in the United States. People die from melanoma. And it's terrifying, and that's the one that, that you know, even one blistering sunburn doubles your risk of melanoma. I mean, I'm a, I'm a board-certified dermatologist and Mohs surgeon, and I have had several sunburns. So I, it's, it's hard to think of someone who, who hasn't had a sunburn. So that, that's the one that really keeps people up at night. Yeah, me too. I mean, I, I lifeguarded a, a long time ago before anybody had heard the initials SPF. And, uh, you know, the most we had was like the white zinc oxide that you put on your nose mostly because it looked cool. Mm -hmm. I don't know how effective it was, but I, I sunburned all the time. So, I mean, I go to a dermatologist every year. Absolutely. Those are the things that we do. I hear it all the time. People come in and they say, Doc, when I was out there, my parents had me in baby oil, you know, baby oil and iodine. That's what I hear. And, and to that I say, it takes about 20 years for skin cancer to develop. So if you today get a sunburn, you can expect in about 20 years you'll develop a skin cancer from today. So, you know, it's never too late to change. That's what I tell people. I operated on a 101 year old lady last week and I was telling her about sunscreen and the importance of sunscreen because it really is never too late. Um, we can't change what we did, right? Nobody, we can't change the sunburns, we can't change what we did, but you can take care going forward and you can see your dermatologist annually, biannually. I mean, that's where, you know, you work with your dermatologist. I have some patients in my practice who I see every six weeks because they have metastatic skin cancers that I'm, I'm keeping a close eye on. But for most people, you can see your dermatologist once or twice a year. Let's talk about what um, people in checking their own skin, looking in the mirror, should look out for? What are the, what are the warning signs? Uh, as we age, we, we get a lot of bumps all over the place. How do we know if it's a bad one? Yep, great question. So the American Academy of Dermatology, which is one of our governing bodies, came up with this great mnemonic for patients called ABCDE. And every letter stands for something. So you want to look at your spot and apply these A, B, C, D, E criteria. And the A stands for asymmetry. So a normal healthy mole you should be able to, to kind of cut down the middle and it should be symmetric. If it's asymmetric, then you know that's a warning sign. B stands for border. So any mole with atypical borders, sort of not just nice, smooth, and round, if it's jagged or it's got sort of protrusions on one end, that's concerning. C stands for color. So healthy, safe moles are usually one color. If you're starting to see different colors, browns and blacks and pinks, that's concerning. D stands for diameter. So anything larger than about the size of a pencil eraser, so six millimeters, that's concerning. And E stands for evolving. I tell people anything that's evolving, anything that's changing, itching, growing, bleeding, these are our warning signs and, and a sign for you to call your board certified dermatologist. Um, we talked about the, uh, the myth among young people about, you know, safe tanning. What, what about sunscreens? I mean, there, there's some people out there concerned that uh, chemicals, I mean, it's a tube full of chemicals and smearing that on your body is itself potentially a carcinogen. Yeah, and this is so, I think there are there are a few times in, you know, in your career where you find yourself e extremely frustrated with, you know, social media or, you know, myths that get out there. And this has to be at the top of my list. You know, for some reason, something got out there, whether it was on TikTok or some some social media platform that said that, that sunscreens had some carcinogenic material in it. And the fallout has been that dermatologists have spent the last several years reassuring patients over and over again, sunscreens are safe and effective. There is absolutely no ingredient, physical blocker, chemical blocker, preservative stabilizer, anything within sunscreens that has been proven to be carcinogenic. You look at the science, we look at the data, and there's absolutely nothing that has been shown to cause cancer. The only thing that does cause cancer is the sun. The only thing that has been proven to protect against that is sunscreens. Last time I bought sunscreen, it was uh, like a Neutrogena two-pack, mm -hmm. and I wasn't looking for, I, I don't know enough to know what to look for, except it was a relatively high number, it was a brand I'd heard of, and it was a two-pack, so it seemed like a good deal. What does an intelligent shopper for sunscreen actually look for? Just that. You know, you're spot on. Look for a brand that you know, a brand that you trust. Neutrogena is a great one. I tell my patients, do not get caught up in the number. It's so easy to see this big number looking at you, 100, 95, 85. Once you get above 40, there's absolutely no added benefit. So, so don't sort of get locked in on the number. I would so much rather you wear the sunscreen. And the most important thing is you want to reapply. So if you buy SPF 100, and you're at Rehoboth, and you're outside all day, 
and you put it on in the morning and you don't reapply, you've done nothing. It's, that, it's giving you like a false sense of security. Is that because you're perspiring? Like, is it different mm -hmm. on, a, on a day like today? It's a 101 according to my car um, versus a day when it's nice and 80. Yep, and it, it, that perspiration inactivates it and sunlight inactivates sunscreen. So over about a period of 90 to 120 minutes of persistent sun exposure, you've completely degraded your sunscreen. So the key is buying that two pack of Neutrogena, but that two pack should only have lasted you a few, you know, I would say for me, I go through a tube on my kids, you know, every week or two, so. As a parent, what do you think about the spray on stuff? So you don't want to be downwind. <laughs> exactly, and, that, and it drives me nuts because I'll see people I'll be at the beach with my kids and I'll see these parents outside and they're happily spraying their children and the wind is just blowing everything away. So I say, if you like the aerosol, that's great. It's convenient, please spray indoors. Please spray before you leave or, or spray in an area with no wind. Um, give me a sentence or two on advice if somebody, despite all your, your good uh, advice here, gets a sunburn. Yep, so a sunburn is basically acute injury to the skin. It's acute inflammation. The way we treat inflammation in the skin is anti-inflammatory. So you can call your dermatologist, call your healthcare provider. They can give you a prescription for a topical steroid. If it's so bad that it's blistered, then you do need a systemic anti-inflammatory and that would be something like prednisone. So there are things that we can do to combat that. Let me say though, and it's really important I say, if your doctor treats you for a sunburn and they give you an anti-inflammatory, that does not mitigate your risk for skin cancer. All it does is make you more comfortable. Dr. Zainab Maksumi, good advice for the summer. Appreciate your stopping by. Thank you for having me again.